Winning streaks are a funny thing. Sometimes they can bring a team together. Remember back in 2010 when LeBron first got to Miami and the start of the season was kind of a mess with the big three struggling to fit and Eric Spolster facing daily questions about whether he'd be fired? The team held the players only meeting, reeled off a 12 game win streak and became the powerhouse that would go on to win two titles in four years. But winning streaks can also end up meaning not much. Last year's Bucks won 18 straight only to get thumped in the second round of the playoffs. Back in 08, the Rockets won 22 in a row, then lost in the first round. So how should we look at the Clippers and Jazz right now? L.A. is on a seven-game win streak, a run fueled by Paul George playing some of the best basketball of his career, and by Kawhi Leonard, who has not only shown up for the Clippers, but is doing it consistently. This current Clipper streak in includes Kawhi's first back-to-back -back games in nearly four years. Kawhi has also done what big stars are supposed to do, like yesterday, when much of the team appeared it hadn't quite woken up yet for the early Sunday afternoon tip. Leonard took things into his own enormous hands, outscoring the entire Thunder starting lineup in the first quarter and finishing with 34, 9, and 8. To me, everything the Clippers do this regular season is important, since last year we saw what happened when the team tried to skip steps. This time, they're giving themselves a much stronger foundation, but will the result be any different? Yeah, we don't know yet. As for the Jazz, well, they're on an eight-game winning streak right now, one of the league's top five, both offensively and defensively. Nearly all their wins so far this season have come by double digits. And Donovan Mitchell has clearly hit the gas pedal during this streak, putting up 27 a game. So what does Utah's streak mean? According to Steve Kerr, a lot. This weekend, the Warriors coach said of Utah, quote, they are trying to win a championship right now, and I think they are capable of doing so. You know, they are where we were three or four years ago, which is, well, quite the comparison. Three or four years ago, Golden State had Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green all playing at the height of their powers on a team that was itself drawing comparisons to the 98 Bulls. I'm not sure that I think Utah's winning streak already puts them in that category. And it's important to remember that just last season, the Jazz had a 10-game win streak and still lost in the first round. Still, both the Jazz and the Clippers runs, they sure feel like something significant, and neither is over yet. So Vince, let's start with you. Who do you feel is the second best team in the West right now, giving some deference to the defending champion Lakers? Do you feel the Clippers slot in as their biggest rival in the West, or the Jazz, given what you've seen this past week or two? Uh, I mean, the Jazz are playing great basketball, and uh, they're, like you said, like you said, they're on a mission. But I still think the Clippers are, are are hungry, and they're also on a mission. They're trying to get to that Western Conference Finals again because they felt like, oh, not again, but to get where they should have been last year because they felt like they let an opportunity slip away. So I think they're hungry, and they're playing great basketball as well. So I still give the edge to the Clippers, even though. You asked me this in maybe two weeks. It, it could be the Utah Jazz if they continue to play like they're playing. Yeah, I think the, the, the Clippers have a higher ceiling because they have guys on their roster who have, Kawhi, who's been a finals MVP a couple of times. But the one thing about these two teams that you have to pay attention to, it's 2021, three-point shooting. The Clippers are number one in the league in three-point shooting yeah. percentage. The Jazz are number two. The Jazz are number one in overall three-pointers made per game. That's what Steve Kerr is talking about, Rachel. He's talking about it reminds him of a team that plays good defensively and also overwhelms the opponent with high-volume three-point shooting. Now, the Clippers' defense at the start of this win streak was ranked in the bottom five in the league. They played better, and now they've crawled into the top 15. So the Jazz are playing more consistently on defense, and that's something that matters. Look, mid-February, I think it's February 12th and 13th, somewhere around Valentine's Day, the Jazz go to L.A. and play a little two-pack of games against the Clippers and Lakers. Hmm. That will be a good referendum, something to look forward to. Very, very right. interesting. Look, they're fun, fun teams to watch right now, and it's pretty fun watching Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert and Jordan Clarkson and everybody on that squad. Really, you can see them learning what they are right now, and that's really fun as well to watch a team figuring out just how much firepower it has. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.